Okay, so a couple of days ago I was watching, uh, I like uh, National Geographic. Uh, who likes National Geographic? Okay. Because uh, personally I feel like I learn a lot from animals than from a lot of humans that I meet. But anyway, uh, there was one scene in the video that I was watching, it was about piranhas. And for some reason it reminded me of something that happened on Wednesday. Piranhas, right? The brother Ibn Stanley, he was here, he gave a nice talk about his family, about how he became Muslim, and all of a sudden we're all over him, like piranhas, right? So, uh, so inshallah, and we'll try to give a good image of the school, and uh, yeah, I think it, it's a sign of love for the brother, you know, we love him and everything, but give him some space, you know, make dua for him, you know, say Allah, may Allah reward you, but don't jump all over him, you know, it's not, it's not the best image, right? But I'm not here to talk about piranhas, I'm going to talk about something else, right? Uh, I'll talk about something related to Qadr. Who can tell me what Qadr means? Qadr. Yes, yes. Fate. Fate and destiny. Uh, we spoke about Qadr before. We said that each and every one of us here has a plan. I have a plan, sister has a plan, brother here has a plan, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the ultimate plan. Donald Trump has a plan, everyone has a plan. Does it work all the time? If it is the Qadrullah, it will work. If it is not the Qadrullah, it will not work, no matter what. We gave the example before the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam and the fire. The fire should work, but when they put him in the fire, it didn't burn. Ismail alayhi salam, the knife should cut, but Qadarullah, it didn't cut. In the story, like the staff of Musa alayhi salam, al uh, yeah. If it is the Qadarullah for the Asa to bring out water from the rock, Surah Baqarah, the water came out. In Surah Taha, he used the same staff for the water to dry up. You know, the partition of the sea, the parting of the sea. So, in the first instance, water came out. In the second instance, the water became dust and dry. This is the Qadrullah. In the story of Musa alayhi salam, again, Pharaoh saw a dream. You know the story. He saw a dream of a boy from Bani Israel, and his destruction will be at the hands of this man from Bani Israel. So he started to kill all the boys, except for the one he was supposed to kill. Not only that, he raised him in his, in his own house. This is the Qadrullah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will realize this, inshallah, every step of your way, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works in mysterious ways. Sometimes we make plans, and it doesn't go according to the plan, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has something better, or something uh, uh, more beneficial for you in store. So you should always be pleased with the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll give you stories. I know some brothers that would be looking for a wife for like five years. They are desperate to get married. They go to every single event they have in town, nothing. Their mommy and their auntie, they visit every house to look for a sister for them, nothing, right? They go to Salatul Jum'ah, they're coming out, they see a sister, who is this? Khalas. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works in mysterious ways. Another example, to see yani, the Qudratullah, this is the, the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He does things that, that are not our, according to our plan. We go according to his plan, but he doesn't go according to our plan. Because his plan is better than ours. So we have been asking people to uh, sponsor uh, classrooms in the school because inshallah we would like to expand the school. The, uh, we have the potential to be alongside uh, Isna, Olive Grove, these big schools, we would like to be like them, why not? Or better than them, why not? We have the potential. Inshallah, we can do it together. So I'm asking people in the community, we have 10 classrooms from uh, KJ, KG to uh, grade 8. Uh, then we have the library and the bookstore. Uh, so I'm trying to get sponsorships for each one of the 12. Each is $25,000, right? So if someone pays $25,000, we put their name on the classroom as sponsors. Okay. 
So, Saturday, Salat al Asr, I was not supposed to be here. I was supposed to be somewhere else. I was at Isna, they had an open house. I was running around with the family, doing different things. But I had to be here for Salat al Asr. Someone said, I need to talk to you. So I came. A brother drove three, four hours to be here in Mississauga to take care of something. He lived somewhere else. So we drove three, four hours to be here. And for lunch, he went to maybe Bamiyan Kebab. And after he finished, like uh, 20 minutes before us, he Googled a place to pray, a masjid. So sure enough, Anatolia came up because we're only one minute drive from Bamiyan Kebab, right? He came here 10 minutes before Salatul Asr. He had some time, so he was looking around in the hallway. And we have the poster for the classroom sponsorship in the hallway, on the stand. He read it, and he came to my office. I was in the office, and he said, I'll give you 25,000 just for my mom and dad. So Allah brought him all the way to here. I've been making announcements almost every Juma. You know, some people came, but some people are hesitant, and they have different plans. And this brother came all the way, three, four hours drive. Allah brought him all the way to pay the 25,000. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works in mysterious ways. Another example, I saw another uh, story of someone who was a senior officer in the uh, US military. So uh, he fought in different places of the world, maybe Iraq, Afghanistan, I don't remember. He said in the video that he went to a masjid to blow it up. This is what he said in the video. And he said he went there Jum'ah, this is where, when they have the most people in the masjid, you know? And he said, he sat inside and eventually he listened to the khutbah. And at the end of the story, he himself became Muslim. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works in mysterious ways. You never know. One last example, one last example. Uh, this is a true story that happened in Saudi, many years back. Uh, a Pakistani brother. He's working there. Who is here from Pakistan? Raise your hand. Yes, where is his feet? Yeah, you're not from Pakistan. Okay. So, no, you're an Egyptian. I know you're not Pakistan. But we love Pakistani food. Uh, so, the brother was working in Saudi, right? He didn't have many friends over there. I'm not sure if it was in Mecca or somewhere else. Uh, so, what happened? The brother died in Saudi, the Pakistani brother. They brought him to the masjid for Salat al -Janazah. He didn't have many friends over there because, of course, the majority are Saudis. Yes, they have different nationalities, but the majority are Saudi. So they brought him to the masjid for janaza. And if you have seen, if you have been to Saudi, they, the way they do janaza, they have a, a board, a piece of wood, flat, and they wrap the body in white and khalas. They don't have big caskets and, and all these things. So they brought his janaza, and they brought another brother from that area, rich brother. So everyone came for the janazah of the Saudi brother. He's a local, his family is there, friends are there. So they say that literally more than 5,000 people came for his janazah. And only three, char, four brothers came for the Pakistani brother's janazah. They prayed janazah for both of them at the same time. And at the end, they took the bodies. Of course, the Pakistani brothers, three or four, they took the body of the Pakistani brother to so one graveyard, uh, the Saudi brother, his family, friends, more than 5,000 people, they take his body, they went to another graveyard. Okay. So remember, the Pakistani brother, his body was carried by three, four people only, because they didn't have many friends over there. The other Saudi brother, more than 5,000 people went with him to the grave. And uh, after they buried him, uh, some imam were there and they were making dua for the brother. Ya Allah, forgive this man in the grave. Everyone was sitting there making dua for them. They're asking Allah to forgive them. And, and you know, they stayed there for about half an hour making dua for that person in the grave. Before they left and before they put dust on the grave, one of the children of the man who, uh, the Saudi brother who passed away, went inside the grave to look at the face of the father and kiss him in the forehead, which is acceptable Islamically because uh, Abu Bakr anhu did the same thing to the Prophet Sassim. He covered his face, he kissed him on the forehead. Uh, he went inside the grave, he opened. Who did he find? A Pakistani brother. 
So they took his body by mistake, and more than 5,000 people were making dua for him, were asking Allah to forgive him, whereas the Saudi brother was carried only by three, four people, they took him to another graveyard. So the son of this uh, you know, uh, Saudi man, he said to his brother, are we going to look for the other, you know, the janazah? The other? He said, no, 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 they, we pray janazah for him, you know, he's already buried, you know, khalas, uh, lay him to rest and khalas will go home, make dua for both and khalas alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works in mysterious ways, you cannot imagine. So all we need to do, just put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do what you need to do and khalas leave it to him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the best in this life and the best in the life to come and give us sincerity in everything we say and do. We'll see you tomorrow, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.